Well, I'm joined right now by Democratic Senator from Delaware, Chris Coons, who sits on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Senator, give us a sense of what do you think the Trump policy is now toward Assad's regime in Syria and their ally Russia, Vladimir Putin especially? What's our policy as this administration? Well, Chris, we don't really know. And I think President Trump owes the United States a clear policy on how we're gonna be behaving moving forward towards Bashar al-Assad and his murderous regime in Syria. We're in the sixth year of Assad's uh, war against his own people. He's killed more than 400,000 uh, Syrians and turned millions into refugees. Uh, I am hopeful that Secretary Tillerson's visit to Moscow, his meetings uh, with their foreign minister Lavrov and possibly with Putin is an opportunity. Uh, for President Trump and his administration, his leaders, to make it clearer exactly what position they intend to take. Uh, obviously, Sean Spicer didn't have a good day. Uh, I think it was wise of him uh, to correct his comments. Um, and my hope is that we can now focus uh, on working with President Trump and his administration, uh, those of us in Congress on the Foreign Relations Committees, uh, and help them focus and sharpen what their policy and strategy is going to be, because they've made such contradictory statements uh, just in the last two weeks. Well, the Secretary of State Tennis Tillerson said we're not going to be able to live with an Assad regime, and the press secretary, Sean Spicer, no matter how badly he said it, basically compared to... Uh, uh, Assad and his use of chemical weapons with Adolf Hitler. So it's pretty clear they see them both certainly as, as menacing in terms of our foreign policy. What more would you like to hear? Well, I'm encouraged uh, that, frankly, that President Trump and Secretary Tillerson and Ambassador Haley have moved from a position two weeks ago uh, of saying that we're just going to have to live with Assad and we need to focus on ISIS uh, to recognizing that Assad is a brutal murderer. Uh, but I think we need to have clarity. Uh, how much farther are we willing to go? Um, the White House was saying today that Russia almost certainly knew that Syria was about to carry out a chemical weapons attack. Are we going to ratchet up sanctions against Russia for their ongoing support for Assad? Are we willing to use force against Assad if he uses barrel bombs uh, or other conventional weapons against his civilian population as he's been doing for years? And how are we going to engage our vital allies across uh, NATO and Western Europe in the fight against Assad if that's the direction President Trump chooses to go? He's the president, and it's important that he develops and clarifies for the American people what policy he's going to be pursuing going forward against Bashar al-Assad. Well, here are my questions, Senator. Maybe you have the answers. First of all, uh, Trump hasn't said anything. He's let every, everybody else talk. A guy who talks an awful lot hasn't said anything. What he thinks about, about uh, uh, what he thinks now about Assad, what he thinks this is a one-off attacking him that airfield once, or is he really going to go at them again? And also, not only is there silence from Trump, but you're also getting Putin saying that there was no nerve gas used. So you really don't have a meeting of the minds yet at all in terms of communication. Are you worried that we're not going to get a Trump statement or that Putin's going to continue to lie about this or both? Well, I think my first piece of advice to the president would be don't make major statements on this in a tweet. Uh, take your time, consult with your Secretary of Defense and Secretary of State, National Security Advisor, and produce a more thorough and thoughtful statement in the next couple of days about what uh, President Trump intends in terms of our direction. Now, this is a very dangerous moment. This is no longer reality TV. This is reality. We have American troops on the ground fighting uh, in uh, Syria against ISIS, in Iraq against ISIS. We have hundreds in Syria, thousands in Iraq, um, and they're quite exposed uh, if... Uh, Russia's ally, Iran, chooses to take action against them. Um, they're at some risk if Assad uh, turns against American or coalition airplanes conducting missions against ISIS in Syria. It's a complex and difficult situation, and I think the president needs to be clear with us what his intended next steps are. What did you make of this, Spicer? Well, I'll call it a faux pas, because I, I think he was thinking... You know, I remember growing up hearing from my father and others that, you know, World War I, the gas, gas was used. I remember all the horrible pictures coming out of World War I from battlefield use of gas and the gas mask and what it did to people. And even when Hitler, the worst person ever perhaps, was surrounded, they didn't resort to that in the battlefield. I think that's what clearly, that's what I think Spicer was talking about. What do you make of his message sending today? Uh, to be generous, uh, Chris, I do think that what he was trying to do uh, was to say that the use uh, of chemical weapons uh, airdropped against civilians is a horrible um, thing and that it deserves uh, to be uh, confronted in the way that Trump did uh, with an attack 
uh, against uh, the air base that launched uh, the chemical weapons uh, use against uh, Syrian right. civilians. Uh, it's never a good idea uh, to bring Hitler in as an example. Uh, mm -hmm. And obviously, uh, Spicer uh, tripped up quite a bit. Uh, and this is a particularly inappropriate week uh, to be uh, overlooking the horrors of the Holocaust. Um, so I, I do think the larger point here, Chris, uh, is that the administration, uh, its spokesman, uh, Mr. Spicer, is trying to say that Bashar al-Assad is uh, an absolutely horrible person and that uh, Putin and Putin's regime is going to rue the day uh, that they stood by as Assad carried out uh, terrible attacks against his own people mm -hmm. year in and year out. And they're trying to increase pressure uh, on Putin to make a choice here to decide whether to rejoin the West. Remember, Putin was kicked out of the <coughs> G8. Uh, the, the G7 is just meeting this week in Italy. Uh, there are sanctions against Putin's regime for uh, his uh, aggressive actions uh, in the Ukraine and in Syria. And so, to be generous, what I think Spicer was trying to do today uh, was to raise the level of rhetorical pressure uh, on Putin to make a choice about whether to keep backing Assad. Right, I agree with you. I also think we even we don't have to have Passover occurring at this time, which it is, uh, and we should rever right. show reverence toward that. But I think we know that Hitler's use of sarin gas and the gas chambers were unforgettable for everyone. Thank you so much, Absolutely. and we should never forget. Anyway, thank you, Senator Chris Coons of Delaware. Joining me right now is Robert Costa, national political reporter for the Washington